So today on Core Gadget Breakdown, we're going to talk about the well-known drum machine and whether you have the Tokyo or the Bilbao or the Gladstone or even the Recife. Nothing beats the well-known London drum machine gadget. It's a classic. It has a lot of samples and a lot of effects and it's very, very useful. I think it's one of the main gadgets that people use in their uh, projects. It's like the number one used gadget. And we're gonna get right into it right now. So this is the London Hypersonic PCM drum module. This is a drum sound module gadget designed specifically for dance music. True to its simple, straightforward looks, it instantly gives you a performance ready drum kit. There are more than 400 samples that will cover your needs for a variety of dance music formats, including electro, minimal, dubstep, and so on. It also provides three effects that you can use on each part as well as a master effect. So here is a outline of some of the features this gadget has. Uh, it has over 400 drum samples, uh, eight poly channels. You can have up to eight drum samples playing at once. There is options to tune the pitch of the sample and there's also option to change the timing. Uh, you, you do have one FX and it goes across all eight samples that so you can turn them on and off for each sample. Uh, there is a punch effect and a low boost effect you control on each individual sample. There is also a reverse effect. You can reverse the sample as well. And there is also volume panning. And there is group options, well, which I will explain later. So the gadget is made up of three pages. You have your edit page here, your IFX page, and your mixer page. We are going to start with the edit page. Okay, so here is the London gadget. We're on the first page, the edit page. And on top, over here on this London gadget, uh, every page has the same uh, top section. So on this top section, you have your drum kit window where you can select your drum kits. There is a total of 63, I think, let's see, yes. There is a total of 63 default drum kits and the, these are the select buttons so you can select your drum kit and this is the effect window where you can pick your effects the same ones for every gadget and these are the two knobs that controls the effects and this is your level dial which just controls the volume of your gadget and now we're on the effect page. So as you can see here, there is eight different sections right here. And they all have the same, uh, they all have the same controls for each individual section. So this top blue windows, these top blue windows that you see, this is where you pick your samples. So if you click on here, you have a little sample window and it shows you all the available samples. You have your kick samples, your snare samples, your clap samples, your clothes hi-hat samples and your open hi-hat samples and your tom drums and your cymbals which also includes uh, crash your crash sounds as well and precaution which has a lot of uh, it has a uh, not precaution I mean percussion excuse me which has a lot of you uh, world worldly precaution sounds and some other sounds too like your rim shots 
and some other things as well in your clicks. And this is the FX sample library, and this one has a couple of FX sounds and a couple of uh, vocal sounds. All in all, it's a very uh, robust amount of samples that you can work with. So now, that's where you pick your. Uh, this is where you picked. This is where you pick your samples, and under that, this is the tune knob. So I, the tune knob just lets you change the pitch of your knob. Here's a kick drum, and maybe you want it deeper, so you just move it down, and that makes the uh, pitch lower, and then you can move it up and make the pitch higher. The next knob is the time knob, and this just controls when the sample should end. So if I go all the way down here and press the sample, the sample will be short. And here's halfway, and here's the full time. So you can only control when you want the sample to end. You cannot control when you want the sample to start, yeah, that's a very it's a little limiting, but you don't really need that too much. But you can make some new samples by just shorting it. And then here is the option for the one shot or the gate. If it's one shot, as soon as you press the button, it'll play the whole sample. Doesn't matter if you do a short tap or a long tap. If it's gate, depending how long you press it, you can control the timing of the uh, sample. So I press a short. That's a very short sound effect. Let me um, let me try. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so after several testing minutes, I realized for the gate to work, if you're on gate, the timer will have to be down to zero. If it's all the way up, you can see here, you can see, you can see down here, or, uh, you know, I have different lengths of the uh, sample. I have different lengths of the sample here. And no matter what, it's playing the full sample. So if we go back to the gadget and um, if we go back to the gadget and I put it to zero and I have it on gate, you can see that now it's playing different uh, lengths of the sample and now if I press here on my keyboard, if I do a short press, the sample is short. If I hold it down all the way, I could play the full sample. It didn't work the way I thought it did, but that's how the uh, gate works. So that can help you a lot if you want to do some, you know, experimental stuff, or you want to do some nice, uh, maybe some varied hit hats. You know, I mean, you could always control the velocity, but this can help a lot too. And then, of course, down here are the buttons that represent the samples. The buttons you press, it just plays the sound. And that's pretty much it for the, uh, uh, for the edit page. So let's move on to the next page. Okay, so this is the IFX page where you put some effects uh, on your sound. So you can see you have the same sample selection here. You can keep changing the samples on this page as well. And now you have the punch knob. And the punch knob adds a bit more, uh, I guess, oomph to your sound. It makes it more harder. So, oh, wrong sound. Let me use the keyboard and see, uh, make sure it's connected. Nope. Okay. And I'm going to
All right, so use the joystick here. Can I, all right. So as I put the punch knob higher, it gives it a nice, uh, you know, it gives a nice uh, more strength to it, mostly in the beginning of the sound. You could probably hear it better on the snare. Let's see. Here's 100%. 0%. Did you hear that? Let's try another sound. Uh, actually, let's see. All right. So you, yeah, so you can hear that snap as I raise it. There's no snap, and it gets snappier and snappier. So the, the, the punch makes the uh, drum sample more harder. It's great if you want your kicks and snares to sound uh, more harder. Because I don't really use these for the noise, but you could mess around with it. So the next knob is the low boost. And the low boost just, you know, it adds a, you know, a low boost to the frequency. And it kind of makes the sound, the more you add it, it makes it more low quality. But uh, if you get it in the middle, it sounds really cool. So here's the uh, kick drum. I'm going to raise the low boost. Now you can see it sounds very different at 100% and weird. But... Uh, it can definitely it definitely can shape your sounds if they're sounding way too repetitive. You know, if you want, like, let's say we have a uh, we have a hit hat and it sounds too clean. See, now it sounds a little more, uh, you know, a little lower uh, lo-fi. It definitely it definitely makes a nice lo-fi sound. And we could try it here. So this is a great way to uh, edit your sound effects even more and make more different drum kits. And now you have the uh, two buttons in the bottom here. So you got your reverse button here and that reverses the sample so kick drum and then i press it and this is very useful because if you didn't realize let's see okay the problem if uh it's not a big problem but you have your symbols here right There's no reverse symbols in this gadget at all. So you have to make your own. So I put the reverse in. Bit. And there you have it. You have a reverse symbol. So the reverse comes in handy. And then next to it is the, uh, the MFX button. This just allows you to use the effect on that sample. So you got a heavy reverb. Let's go back to the kick drum. Now turn it on. And now I can use the effect. Same thing with the uh, snare. Well, it has a right effect on it. But yeah, sometimes you don't want some of the drums to use this effect. So you can use this button to turn it on and off. And then you still have your you still have your drum buttons here, and that's pretty much it for the IFX section. So let's move on to the next section. Okay, so this is the mixer section, and you still have the samples you can select, but now the buttons are gone because now you have your slider. So. 
the first knob is your panning knob and that just changed the panning of your sound so we have the uh oh i gotta turn this on again okay so we have your kick drum i'm gonna pan to the left now it's on our left side if you're wearing headphones or if you have good speakers you'll be able to hear this and i'm gonna pan back to the right into the middle then to the right So there we go. So you can pan your drums, which is very nice. Then you have a mute button. This will just mute the sound. So it won't work. Um, so you have a mute button. You may want to use it if you just need to test out the drums that you don't want to hear it for now. So it's kind of like a small mixer here. Or you can use it for the to edit the parameters. And maybe you want to mute it to do some kind of effect or whatnot. So this view button is can be useful for a lot of things. Now next to this, the off button, this is the group button. Now this is a very important thing that drum machines have in Core Gadget, which I do like. And it's very needed. As you can see by default, you have the letter A. And these are, should be the two hi-hats. You got this one and that one. So what happens, they're in group A. What happens, this limits the sound to mono, which means I can't play the uh, nose sample or the lean sample at the same time, no matter how hard I try. So you see how the lean, how the, uh, lean gets interrupted by a nose when I press it real quick? The uh, lean first and then the nose. And if I turn it off, I can play both at the same time. So of course, this is great because um, you can't play two hi-hat sounds at the same time on a real hi-hat. I mean, you're hitting it. So this is great. Uh, there is only two groups. That's more than enough though. So let's say if you're making like uh, video game music, or if you want that old limited PCM sound where you can only play one sample at a time. So I will put the kick drum and the snare on group A. So, oh wait, here it is. And uh, it's there, you can interrupt the kick and, uh, and the snare drum because they're on the group. And I like this because um, it lets me make my old school music or old school sounds where like you were just limited with one sample channel and you couldn't play two samples at the same time. So that's how these group sounds work. And then here is your volume slider. So that's where you can balance your sound. So you got your kick drum, I'm gonna lower it down. And there, so you have that. That controls the volume of your uh, samples. So this is where you're gonna do your uh, panning and your, uh, and your balancing. So you can have a nice drum kit. All right, so we learned about the uh, London Gadget. It's a pretty cool gadget. I do have some more footage where I'm going through some of my uh, songs I created, which have some very cool uh, drum collections I created, and maybe we'll create one together. So stay tuned for that one, and I'll think of the next gadget to work on. It's not going to be a drum machine, so I'll figure it out. If you have any suggestions, you can write it down in the comments below, but uh, I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.